All right, we want to get you to Brownsville, Texas now, where a suspect has been arraigned and charged in connection with this weekend's deadly crash there. A uh, very deadly crash. At least eight people dead after an SUV plowed into a group at a bus stop outside a migrant facility. This happened on Sunday. The group is believed to have been mainly asylum seekers, mainly from Venezuela, in fact. Officials are investigating whether the crash was intentional. No motive described so far. Brownville's chief of police unveiled the suspect's name and the charges he faces. This was just uh, a few moments ago, in fact. Take a listen. George Alvarez is a Brownsville local with an extensive rap sheet. He has been formally charged and arraigned with eight counts of manslaughter, 10 counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. He has received bonds totaling $3.6 million. CBS News Homeland Security and Justice reporter Nicole Skanga joins us now. Nicole, you were in that uh, press conference, got some solid questions in yourself. Just bring us up to speed because the police now saying the crash didn't appear to be um, accidental. Talk to us about what they believe the motive may have been as of now. Yeah, Errol, Tony, good to be with you. The police saying they have not yet determined whether or not this was intentional. You mentioned the suspect, a rich criminal history to the tune of 22 charges. We also learned that of those eight fatalities, six were dead on the scene and multiple remain in critical condition at area hospitals. We know the driver ran the red light before veering off to the right into that bus stop where uh, 18 individuals were struck. That is what the police chief told us today. Uh, again, they're waiting for this toxicology report uh, to better understand whether there was any alcohol uh, in the system of this individual. Uh, in terms of the victims, uh, the police chief did confirm at this time uh, the eight victims, all of them men, uh, multiple victims, uh, Venezuelan nationals. And right now, there is this very laborious process of Brownsville Police Department working with with CBP to identify all of the victims, to inform the families. And, and that process has included reaching out not only to the Venezuelan embassy, but several embassies, police said. Hey, Nicole, you talked to the mayor of Brownsville uh, about how the community is handling all this. What do you have to say? Yeah, we had an exclusive interview with Mayor Trey Mendez, who just days ago ago declared uh, an emergency in the city of Brownsville connected to, of course, the lifting of Title 42, that public health authority uh, that is expected to bring an uptick in migrant arrivals to the city of Brownsville. He said he was not expecting the tragedy that unfolded yesterday, but the city really came to the response of the victims. Take a listen. Absolutely. Credit goes to our law enforcement, our first responders. We had our fire department out there within minutes. Our police department was out there clearing the scene within minutes. The migrants that were there as well, some of them were paramedics, they responded. Uh, they assisted some of the injured as well, which is uh, just an amazing story. Uh, we also had individuals from Ozanam. The, uh, the director was there. He told me that he himself saw what happened, uh, tried to help. Uh, there was individuals that were outside when this occurred. They uh, went out there to try and help. So it was a, a, just a response with several, uh, not just our law enforcement first responders, also some air support with a helicopter later, uh, but also the migrants themselves and individuals at Ozanam. And so, just so I have this. Tony, Errol, you heard it there. The mayor saying that there were migrant bystanders with EMT training who responded to the victims once they were struck yesterday morning. Pretty incredible stuff. He says in the days ahead, he expects the city to come together in response to not only this tragedy, but also uh, the sort of looming uh, border crisis that we have seen to welcome new migrants into the community and to make them feel safe despite uh, this incident. Yeah, Nicole, that really jumped out to me as well. The mayor saying that other migrants helped um, help those who were injured. This is different, though, because some of them are in um, an, un, an unclear legal position. So, how how are authorities working to identify victims in this case that may be from other nations? Yeah, well, we heard the police chief say that they are working uh, not only with CBP, but other, uh, you know, U.S. components to reach out to uh, the embassy in Venezuela, other embassies throughout Latin America to identify family members and inform them of this. Obviously, a challenging situation. We also heard, uh, you know, from the police chief today, yes, that number of fatalities has ticked up. So it was six. Uh, it is eight today. Um, also, the number of injured 
uh, reaching out, informing those family members. Uh, really tragic uh, that they were waiting at the bus stop, the individuals that were struck, off to their next destination in the United States to start a new life here as they sought asylum. All right, Nicole Skanga for us. Nicole, thank you very much.